page 29, a study in finger velocity. Well, let's talk about that. Also introducing you to the metronome markings. So we'll talk about that too. A study, also known as an etude, is just some piece of music where you're focusing on some aspect of piano playing or music in general. Some, it could be anything. This is a study in finger velocity. Velocity is speed. Finger speed. Wiggle in the fingers real quick. Oh boy. Cherney, Carl Cherney, the, he wrote a whole lot of stuff. And I like his stuff. I, I encourage you to you, go get one of his books. I have a few and I just play through them for fun because they're, they're good for you. The only thing is, if you're going to use these books, don't use the metronome markings in the book. Those are like for professionals, for people who really know what they're doing. They go zoom. You take it at your speed, and you start slow, and you can gradually speed it up over time. I usually take a pencil, and I'll write in the metronome marking I'm working on, and then when I'm ready to speed it up a little bit, then I'll cross that out, and I'll write in the next faster metronome marking and I keep track of my metronome markings over time I gradually speed it up. I have never been able to play any of them at the metronome marking in the books that they that I don't know. My fingers don't move that fast. Don't care. I can play them fairly quickly and I enjoy doing it. There's some nice pieces in there and I recommend the Cherney stuff. Look, just Google Cherney studies or something like that and you'll find all kind, he wrote hundreds of them. So let's look this over. I'll go through the routine for learning a piece of music. I'll come to the metronome marking later. It's four lines of music long. There's repeat signs, but there's only four lines of music to deal with. Treble and bass clef. One sharp in the key signature. We're in the key of G major. So make sure you're doing the scale for G major. And while you're at it, go ahead and do the scale for E minor because it also has one sharp in the key signature. It's in 2-4 time, so it's 1-2-1-2. Two, one, two. we got six eighth notes everywhere, so it's going to be 1-e-enda, 2-e-enda, 1-e-enda, 2-e-enda. Now, I don't count that all the way through. I'm too lazy for that. I only count it when I need it. So on these other measures where there's just half or eighth notes, I just go 1-and, 2-and on those. So it's like at the beginning, one e and a two e and a one and two and one and two and one e and a two and one e and a two e and a. That's how I count it. And remember, you're only counting at the beginning to learn the rhythm. Once you have the rhythm, you don't count it anymore. You feel the rhythm. Let's take it one hand at a time. Make sure we understand what each hand is doing. The right hand, you're up here. And I trust you know the names of all the notes in the music now. Please, it's important. You don't need to take a pencil and write them in. You just need to know what they are. It's a G up here. It's one E and a. One E and a. That's about as complicated as it gets. And. And as I'm playing this, I'm letting the wrist collapse a little bit on each beat, and I'm just transferring weight from finger to finger. I'm not holding the hand still and trying to use the fingers for this. I really don't recommend it. Just it, like that first measure, I'm just trans. I'm just rolling the hand up and back down. I'm just lowering whichever finger I want the weight to be on. Here, here. I'm just transferring weight from finger to finger. I'm walking on the piano with five legs or fingers. And that's how I'm doing all of these. That in the second line, that first measure here, I'm just transferring weight from finger to finger. Type thing. Let's go to the third line. You're here. One and a two. Let's look at the left hand. It's just got chords, half notes. There's a good G chord. So one of the problems I'm having with these series of books from this author is she's not doing anything with chords, or he or whoever wrote it. You're not teaching you chords. You need to understand the chords. And I prefer that. This is a G chord. There's three notes, 
Now you can have more than three notes in a chord, but we're just dealing with three. That's the most common. And the bottom note is a G, and it's every other note. And if you're doing the G scale, you'll notice these three notes. It's one, third, and the fifth. The first, third, and the fifth. One, three, five of the scale. Well, it's a G chord. That's what she's doing here. And then third measure, it's the D7 chord. Here, the little finger comes down. Just kind of memorize that right now. I don't want to get into the chords until the book does. I just hope the book does soon, because you need to know this. Now, this is really all the left hand does. In the third line, you get this chord. Both thumb stays where it is. These fingers come down. For a while, for a while. Now in this kind of a pattern in the third line, when you're going here to here, because you're going back and forth, you can do this. I can use 4 two, one for the G chord. This way I'm saving this finger. I'm doing that. That's another way of fingering it. I leave that up to you and your teacher. And the last line, the next two last measure, you come down a little bit here. It's a D, an F sharp, and a C. And then just a 2 1 here to finish it off. And they're just half notes. Not doing much because you need to focus more on the right hand. Now, once I have the notes and the rhythms up, I go back and get rid of the hesitations, and then I add in the articulation, or slurs and staccatos. I'm on the key and I'm bouncing off. If you go slow, you're on the key bouncing off at the wrist. If you go fast, you, you don't have time for that. you got to do that, but keep it a small motion. Don't flap around. Yeah. The left hand, they don't give you anything. Try and connect it. You can't. But you pretend you can connect it. Just pretend it's connected. Then once I have the articulation down, then I think about the dynamics. P at the beginning. Piano is soft. It's melody, which is the right hand. These chords would be very soft. How light can you play these? Very little weight. The problem is you got to get the notes down at the same time. You want to be really loose because you'll tense up. I got to get them down at the same time. I'm going to hold this pattern. I'm going to arm. Tense loose. You want to be as relaxed as possible. The second line is loud. Forte. A lot of weight. Left hand, keep it out of the way. Third line is soft again. You see the crescendo in the second measure? You get soft, loud, moderately loud. And the last line is loud again, okay? It's mainly for the right hand. The left hand just needs to be out of the way. And then the speed. Allegretto. Allegretto is in between moderato and allegro. It's like moderately fast, sort of fast. I call it the fun speed. When I see a piece in Allegretto, I think, okay, it's probably fun here. And this is where we talk about the metronome markings. You see after the word Allegretto, they give you a note and then an equal sign and then a couple of numbers. Well, these are the numbers you can try the metronome at. It's a range from one number to the other. So you start the metronome at 92. It's there. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, that makes it 16th notes. 1, E, and a 2, E, and a 3, E, and a 4, E, and a bleh. That's how fast that would be. And then it takes it up to 110. So what you do is you start at 92. Actually, you start much slower than that. Gradually work it up. And so maybe later on I come up to a couple of notches and I try it again. Maybe at 94. When I 
can comfortably play that accurately okay, hmm? then maybe I take it up a couple notches more. 98. When I'm comfortable with that, then I take it up again. And I can go all the way up to, well, they say 110. I think 110 is a bit much. It's like I was saying, those are more for the pros, the people who can do, wiggle their fingers really fast. One, two, one, two, one and two, and one and two. It's a bit fast. I don't expect you to play that anytime soon at that speed. If you can, you don't need me. You just go on your own, have fun, do whatever. Take it more at a speed like in the play with me. Start around there and gradually speed it up over time. This is one of the things you can continue to work on indefinitely. Just have fun with it. You can use it if you believe in warming up. You can use it as a warm up. I warm up with scales and arpeggios only. I don't use these things to warm up with, but a lot of people enjoy them very much. So if you want to warm up with it, go for it once you learn it. Now the repeats, remember the repeats is pretty simple. You, you have a repeat at the end of the second line that sends you back to the beginning to play the first two lines again. Then the second to the last two lines are surrounded by repeats. So you're going to play those twice. So you play the first two lines twice and then the second two lines twice. And then if you're, you're done, huh? Let's play it together very slowly to check the notes and the rhythms. I'm not going to do louds and softs, just notes and rhythms. I'll do the staccatos and slurs and we'll do the repeats. And because there's so many notes here, I'm going to put the metronome on eighth notes. So I'll give us two quarter notes to come in. So I'm going to go ready and go and one e and da. Uh. One, those are sixteenth notes. That's how fast we're going to go. Ready and go and. Repeat. Repeat.